this is another experimental um, technique primarily designed for emergency use only. I'm going to be using the Edelred Hexon stove for this particular demonstration. Other stoves would work similarly that have this type of a connector because this is the only one type of style that I have that I can use uh, this technique on. Other um, models that have a proprietary um, connector, I, I don't have the tools for that. Now if you have been, let's say, using this technique, this hybrid three-stage technique for kerosene, you will be undoubtedly carrying your one uh, your small syringe here for alcohol this has one cc of alcohol in it it's got an air bubble that's okay and you have your five cc syringe here that contains uh, in this case i've overdrawn it five and a half cc's of coleman fuel and a half cc of air bubble but you've also been thinking that well if something happened to your pump for your kerosene use, as in this type of device, you have been farsighted enough to bring this, which is simply a 20cc syringe made by this company, HSW. Uh, they have a plunger that is not made out of rubber, so it, it tends to not be as affected by petroleum products as those that have a, uh, a rubber type. Anyway, this syringe has got about 20 cc's of kerosene in it that I've drawn up and so this is going to be uh, a simulated test of what it would be like in a real world situation where your pump for your kerosene has gone south and you can't get a replacement in time through FedEx or something and so but you've been smart enough to bring this with you and of course if you're using the hybrid technique You've already got one of these little adapters. So this is going to be a simulated test. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the 1cc of the priming alcohol. This gets things going. And up to this point, everything will be identical to the way this test uh, normally is, or the way the startup routine is. This is the adapter, and. Uh, I'm going to attach it to this uh, connector here. Normally the fuel pump would connect to this, but this is now connecting in its place. And I will open up the fuel valve and put in a few cc's of Coleman fuel to kind of prime the line. It doesn't have to be exact, so I'm just gonna kind of put in a few cc's. That should be enough. And I leave the control valve open. Now I'm going to go ahead and start this so that it gets things heated up. And I'll put the lid on like I normally do. And you can see that there's a little bit of flame that is developing as a result of some of the um, fuel that's in the line. This is normally what happens with this technique. Uh, it begins to start vaporizing fairly quickly. This little bit of uh, fuel that's in the line assists in getting the uh, burner going so I actually now routinely put some fuel in the line I don't want it spilling out because then it makes more of a mess than I need but I want a little bit in the line most of this that you see here is actually stuff that is vaporizing it's not stuff that's spilled out I'm gonna go ahead now and 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 exert some pressure on the uh, syringe because this is simulating what happens with a real fuel bottle and as you can see, that the, uh, the burner is actually going. And um, now I have to let my finger off here because I want to open this up. Because I'm going to put a pot of water on. Because this is again a real world situation. Now I will resume my application of the uh, <clears throat> and it doesn't take much force with this but you want to as much as possible get the burner going
fairly at a high uh, rate so that it heats up in, in preparation for the kerosene that will be following this. Again, it doesn't take much force on this, and the air bubble helps to uh, moderate some of the uh, variabilities that normally would occur in just trying to press down on the plunger. But now the energy that is in the Coleman fuel is being used to do two things. It is heating up, I have about 500 milliliters of water in here. It is heating up the water and it's also heating up the burner. So we're saving fuel while we heat up the burner. We're not wasting time waiting for the burner to heat up or the generator. Now I will be running out of the fuel that's in the syringe shortly. That's the end of that. So I will now close off the fuel valve and disconnect the syringe but not the adapter because now I'm going to attach to the adapter the syringe that has the kerosene in it. Open up the fuel valve again and I have to restart the stove since it went out. Now I'm pressing down on the syringe. You can see it here. I don't want to get it too close to the burner, but I'll try to keep it in the field of view. And what happens normally with this is that it takes about a minute for this particular stove for the kerosene to get pushed, uh, to push the, the uh, Coleman fuel through the line. And then you end up having the kerosene hit the burner. I have found that for the most part, five and a half cc's of Coleman fuel is enough to heat up the burner. However, I should say that this is the first time I've tried this test where I'm using only a syringe, no pump, and I'm making a transition to kerosene. So for all I know, all hell will break loose when the kerosene finally hits the, sto uh, the burner. If there is no significant flame, fireball, anything like that, then that will tell me that for the most part, this is a workable routine in an emergency situation. I'm not suggesting that you do this on a regular basis, although from a theoretical standpoint, you might actually be able to do exactly that. Um, it might be possible to not even carry a fuel bottle. Just carry this little adapter and some of these syringes. Uh, there's an advantage to that if you don't mind pressing down on your on the syringe because the syringe is pretty much foolproof. There's nothing that can go wrong with it. And uh, it weighs 10 grams. The adapter weighs more than the syringe because it's made out of brass, but it's a prototype. Uh, but even then, you're talking about a very lightweight thing that doesn't take up much space. You still have to have fuel, of course, but for the most part, it's not, uh, I mean, you can't get away from the fuel. You're going to have to have fuel if you want to run the stove at all. But as you can see, I mean, now you could say, well, can you, is this practical? Uh, depends on what you mean by practical. It will heat up water. Uh, the air bubble that is in this syringe acts as a kind of a means of moderating the pressure within the syringe so that uh, even if you take your hand off, the pressure that's in the air bubble will tend to keep the fuel going at least for a little bit. Uh, and it also keeps you from pressing too hard. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm here I'm more or less just resting my hand on the syringe. So if you needed to let go for a minute, stir your food, and then uh, or something, and then resume your your pressure, you can do it. It changes the intensity of the burner some. But again, as an emergency procedure, it's certainly got to it's got to have some advantages over not having any stove at all that that works. And, and this uh, Hexon stove, this has got a 0.28 millimeter um, uh, jet. 
It's not the one that's supplied with the stove. It's the one that I borrowed from another stove, but it fits this particular stove. Um, but at least it provides you with an, an alternative and an emergency alternative. Or if you are really strapped for space uh, and you really don't want to bring along a pump, uh, this is certainly a workable option. As you can see, there was no residual flame. The burner was adequately heated up. And uh, it does work. I'm actually pressing too hard and I'm losing some of my kerosene around the o-ring on this thing I need to be careful about what I'm doing uh, this again is a prototype it um, it doesn't seal as well as I would like but as again as an experimental uh, means of testing this out it certainly does uh, work a uh, an actual working model that is a production model, would have, of course, much better sealing characteristics. Now, on the last test that I did as an experiment uh, for emergency use, I used just Coleman fuel, and I used almost the entire 20 cc's that was uh, within the syringe. Kerosene burns a bit hotter, and so I suspect that I would probably use a little less the uh, water is already beginning to slightly show a rolling boil, so I would think that at this point uh, the water has reached a point that is considered acceptable, and that's even allowing for the loss of fuel due to the leak that's in this particular adapter. And now I have a rolling boil, so I will stop at this point, and I will simply remove the fuel. I'm going to now just pull the fuel that's in the line out. I'm just basically going to withdraw as much fluid as I can so that I don't have to worry about losing any fuel. Now there's going to be some residual that's going to re stay in the line no matter what. And again, this particular uh, adapter doesn't seal as well as I would like, but I got back a few cc's which is better than nothing. So I will close off this valve and, uh, and that basically is the end. Again, I'm sorry about the loss of some of the fluid from the uh, adapter, but again, this is just, uh, a prototype, but it does demonstrate that yes, under emergency circumstances, uh, this is a workable option. I uh, wiped off the bottom of the pot with this um, paper towel, as you can see, there isn't a lot of any soot uh, on the bottom of the pot as this typically occurs as a result of this transition. I would say this is a very clean transition, and this is a, a minuscule amount of residual uh, carbon on the bottom of the pot.